In this project, you're gonna use Grafana to build dashboards like this all through the Grafana MCP in Cursor. Grafana is an open source tool and it's used by companies like Airbnb, Netflix, Uber to monitor their systems in real time. At the end of this project, you will have a complete e-commerce analytics dashboard. Plus you'll also get documentation that you can share to recruiters on LinkedIn, GitHub, or any other platform. And you're gonna do it in a modern way using AI. Plus I'll walk you through step by step. All right, let's get into it. Let's go. All right, by the way, what do you think about the haircut? Looking good, huh? All right, let's get into it. All right, let's imagine that we have an SQL query like this. Select status count all from orders group by status. Now on the left-hand side, we have a PostgreSQL table, rows and numbers, something like PostgreSQL. It's good for storing data in tables. You write a query, you get back text, and every time you wanna update numbers, you rerun that query. Now, if we put the same query in Grafana, we're gonna see something like this, a table, a visual summary of our data. Now you see Grafana doesn't actually store anything. It pulls data from databases and and turns them into visual charts. And those charts update automatically. You set the refresh interval and the dashboard stays current without you doing anything. Both Grafana and Postgres are open source tools. PostgreSQL is for storage and queries and Grafana is for visualization and monitoring. Grafana supports dozens of connections like PostgreSQL, MySQL, Prometheus, Elasticsearch. You'll configure a connection once, which we'll go through soon. And after that, Grafana knows exactly where to fetch that data. All right, let's get into the actual project now. But before we do, I just wanna quickly check that you already have Docker running here with the Postgres MCP as well. If you're like, why on earth would I have those? If that makes no sense to you, don't worry. I'll leave a link to it in the description below, but this is actually project number four in our data engineering series. And you have to set up a little bit in order to do this project. If you don't have Docker in Postgres, then follow the project guide and it'll tell you step-by-step. Step. It'll walk you through things like installing Docker desktop, Postgres SQL container, UV package manager, MCP servers, and demo data, of course. If that's you, Pause this video, go to the project guide, come back, and I will see you in a bit. If you've already done this, we need to install Grafana. We need to go ahead and actually install Grafana here. So I'm gonna open up a terminal mm -hmm. here. If you don't know how to open up a terminal, just go to the top of your screen here and hit new terminal. I'm just gonna make this a little bit bigger. If you've been following along with this series, make sure that you are in the MCP data mm -hmm. series section. You can just do that by running PWD, which is print working directory. And we are there. Now we're actually gonna install Grafana in a Docker container. And the reason we're doing this is because we're installing some software, we can actually install it all in the container and at the end of the project we can just delete the container and nothing is permanently installed on our machine so i'll go to the project guide here copy this in and i'm going to paste this into the terminal and then hit enter cursor is going to ask you to access some other apps make sure you hit allow and then you should see the download process start here now if you're looking at this command right here this minus d that means it runs in a detached mode, meaning it runs in the background. Name Grafana just gives our container a name so that we can reference it later. Dash P3000 to 3000 just maps port 3000 on our computer, so my computer, to port 3000 inside the container. And this lets us access Grafana at localhost 3000. And then lastly, Grafana slash Grafana latest is just the image that Docker pulls from the Docker hub. Next, we're gonna go to localhost 3000 in whichever browser you want. And here the default credentials are just admin and admin for password, and we can log in. It's gonna come up with this little uh, pop-up right here saying continue to use the default password exposes you to security risks. For us, we're just using it for a project, so it doesn't really matter too much. We can go ahead and hit skip. Now here you can see Grafana is running, which is exciting. Congratulations. But it has no data to display yet. So I need to connect it to PostgreSQL. All right, so now we need to set up authentication so that Grafana MCP within Cursor can actually control Grafana. Now, the way that we do this is Grafana uses service access tokens. So all you gotta do is go into administration right here, go into users and access, and then click server accounts. And we wanna create a service account here. I'm gonna call the display name MCP account and the role should be admin right here. And we can just go ahead and hit create. This admin role gives the MCP full access to create dashboards, configure data, and manage visualizations. So now I can actually add a service access token and generate a token. You can copy this to clipboard or store it somewhere else and we'll need this for the next stage. So now we actually need to set up our MCP and to do that, we need some JSON. So we can go into the project guide here and we can actually just paste our token into here and hit enter and then copy in this JSON block. Once we've done that, we can go back to cursor here, hit settings in the top right-hand corner, go to tools and MCPs, and then we need to add 
a new MCP server. Now, if you follow the steps correctly, you should have some MCPs in here. Head up to the third bracket from the bottom, make sure you have an apostrophe, and then we're gonna paste in this JSON here and make sure that everything is good. Once it's looking good, just hit Command Save. And if you've done things correctly, you should see that Grafana is green now. So you have green for Docker, Postgres, and Grafana. Don't worry about DBT. We can actually just disable that if we want. If you're not seeing green here, I'd recommend closing cursor down and then restarting it. And hopefully you should be seeing green. But if you're still running into issues, I'd recommend copy pasting your issues into the AI chat here and troubleshooting through there or going to the project guide that has a whole section on common errors. All right, so now Grafana is running and connected to cursor, but Grafana still doesn't know where it's getting the data from. So we need to configure a data source here. And this data source should point to our PostgreSQL database. So back in our local host here, we can go to connections and click on data sources, and we're gonna add a data source. From here, we're gonna look for PostgreSQL, click into this. We now need to fill in our connection details, Grafana PostgreSQL data source, is correct then for host we're actually going to do host dot docker dot internal semicolon 5432 or is that a colon I don't know. And this is where Grafana will look for PostgreSQL. The 5432 is PostgreSQL's default port, but, but why are we using host Docker internal instead of localhost? So let's take a look at what is actually happening right now. This is the setup we had. We have a computer and inside that we have a Docker environment that is running a Grafana container and a PostgreSQL container on port 5432. Now, when Grafana tries to connect to localhost here, it fails. It's looking inside its own container. And obviously PostgreSQL isn't inside its own container. So that connection fails. Host Docker internal tells Grafana to look at the host machine's network instead. That's where it can find PostgreSQL container on port 5432. So here you can see Grafana successfully reaches the Postgres container on host Docker internal 5432. So now we can go back to the form here and the database name is demo, but this is the database name that we created when I created the PostgreSQL container. Username is app, password is app. We want TLS and SSL mode to be disabled. We can go ahead and go to the bottom here and hit save and test. And you should see database connection okay. And this means the connection is live. So Grafana can now query PostgreSQL and turn the results into charts. So now that we've done this, we can actually build complete dashboards through Cursor. So I can go back to Cursor here and I'm gonna make sure I have my AI chat window open. So in the project guide here, I'm gonna copy in this prompt here, go to Cursor and paste this in the AI chat window. I'm gonna go ahead and run this. And basically what this prompt is saying is it's creating a dashboard called e-commerce analytics. And that dashboard has six panels. So the top row should have four panel stats. And these are single numbers showing key metrics. So things like total revenue, total orders, average order value, and total customers. Man, you can see that cursor has already done this. And in the bottom row, we're gonna have order by stats and we're gonna have revenue by region. The prompt also told Grafana to format currency values with dollar signs and to refresh the data in the dashboard every 30 seconds so that the data stays current. Cursor has used the Grafana MCP to create everything. So the dashboards, the panels, the queries, the configuring the visualizations. And now if we go back to Grafana, Fana here and go to our dashboards, you're gonna see this e-commerce analytics dashboard pop up. And congratulations, you have built your first dashboard on Grafana. Let's go. So as I said, the top row shows your key metrics here and the bottom row is showing your two breakdowns by status and region, all pulling from real data in PostgreSQL. So let's say from here, we wanna add some more charts. Something common is a time series chart to show revenue over time, right, at a company. So I'm gonna go back to the project guide. I'm gonna copy in this prompt here, go back to cursor and paste it in. And essentially what this prompt is doing is it's adding a line chart. It's what we wanna see revenue over time. And it is rounding each order date down to the first day of the month, Jan, February, March, April. And this groups daily data into monthly buckets. It then sums up all the revenue and converts it into a format that is gonna be useful for Grafana to create that time series. Things are looking all done here in cursor. I can go back to our dashboard, refresh the page here, and you should see this pop up at the bottom. Now you might see something like zoom to data and we just wanna click that and it's gonna pull in the right time period. And here, you can see our monthly revenue over time. I love data, man. This is so much fun. I could just play around with this all day. Looking at something like this, obviously we've done well throughout this period. Now, obviously in this data set, the data doesn't actually go till December. So our November value here, does look of concern, but it's actually just not a completed data set. But we seem to be making some cash. We've made total $5 million in revenue. So let's go. We're eating good tonight.
Now something to note here is at the top here we can change the time period so you could do something like last two years and of course we don't have data before that but we could change this up and use a slicer any way that we wanted. We can also change the auto refresh intervals so we can go to 10 seconds, 30 seconds a minute and we can auto refresh. We can hover over any of our charts here to get a more accurate reading. Of course right here these are fixed metrics so this is just total revenue, this is just total orders average order value, total customers. We can add in more charts as we like. I would encourage you to play around with this. Just make a lot of charts, try things out, see what you can build in Grafana. That is the best way to learn in my opinion. And don't be afraid to just have some fun. This is supposed to be a fun project and it is really cool. It's used by a lot of people in the industry. So it's gonna be a fun one. If you've enjoyed the video, make sure to leave a like, subscribe, do all that stuff, but also check out the entire project in the description below and make sure you fill in your documentation. You need to fill in your documentation so you actually stand out to recruiters. You need to show your work, have proof of your skill. As always, I hope you have a blessed week and I'll see you in the next one. Peace.